Hi everybody, and welcome to the Intermediate Concepts chapter. And I can promise you a lot of coolness coming up, but have in mind that now the training wheels are slowly gonna come off, and I am gonna be building systems and explaining everything, but I'm not gonna be spelling out all my wiring and every small detail that I do, because most of that is what we have done over and over again, so now it would be nice to have some more time to discuss stuff that is more important. And to open up this chapter, which is actually where the most of the coolness will reside in, we are gonna look at something quite interesting, and that's ray casting. And what I mean by ray casting is the functionality that allows you to look from your particles in any direction and get information from what's happening in this direction. And again, we're gonna build an example, and that's gonna be this covering teapot, which if you preview the animation, it's covering from up there to down here. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be creating particles and I'm gonna create a dust wave based on the distance between the teapot and the ground. So, to start with this, I'm gonna be creating my particles. And that's the usual idea with the position born. Now, I'll need some particles on my teapot over here. And since the teapot is moving, that's the first time we are gonna actually put particles on a moving teapot. And if you remember, we have discussed several ways to use the position helper. And the usual is just gonna be create a node and grab the position helper and grab the surface position and you'll see that I have already assigned material ID 9 to the faces at the bottom of the teapot so that's the material ID I'm gonna put my particles on now the thing is that um, from what we have tried so far to put the particles before the position born and fit the positions you see that in this case it doesn't give me the following, which is understandable because that only happens here in the beginning. Then we have also done this thing, fit the particles to the surface position, use a position to give them the actual position, which is gonna assign actually particles if I create it by frequency on the object over time, you see. But none of these solutions will actually work if I want to keep my particles on the object as it's moving. And the reason it's not working is again that the data over here is only passed when the particle is created. So to make this actually work, I'm gonna use the same setup, but I'm gonna cut these guys, rename this set generate, create a new set for positioning. And I'm gonna realize this setup in a new dynamic set. So now, with just 100 particles pistol shot and a bigger lifespan, you'll see that it is actually going to work. So that's the way to make your particles follow the surface they are born on. And now we're gonna proceed to the sweetness. What I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna project a ray for my particles in downwards direction and I'm gonna find the point that uh, this ray intersects with the ground and I'm gonna create a particle there. And to do this, I'm gonna use the intersect node in Thinking Particles that's quite rich in inputs and outputs and that's cool because it allows you quite a lot of flexibility. So I'm gonna take my group, which I'm gonna rename Seeds and I name a group seeds whenever I have particles that which I'm not gonna render. So I'm clicking off render over here. But I'm gonna use to create the particles that I'm actually gonna render. And that's exactly the case here. So I'm gonna give the intersect nodes my particles position. And you should notice that here it says position, which means that it does not require particles per se. Uh, so I can give it any position, either a calculate position or a nodes position or anything, and it's gonna be able to cast array. So I already have the origin of the ray, and then I'll need to specify the direction of the ray. And just like what I've been doing with the gravity, I will simply pick up a point 3 and link its output to direction. So now if I have z minus 1, it's gonna shoot down. So I have the origin and then the direction of the ray. And now the next thing that's uh, quite important is the length of the ray. And you see over here, I have in the interface of the intersect node several options. 
First, I have the speed, and that speed thing here is going to function in two ways, actually. First, it's going to be a speed. So if you imagine a particle which is being shot by the position that you have supplied here in this direction with this kind of speed. And the other mode would be as length. And actually, that's what I'm using most of the time. So I'm going to click here, speed as length. You see, I have also two-sided if I have geometry with normals facing either way. And I also have subtree, which is going to enable me to intersect not only with the object I supply, but with its children objects too. Which reminds me that I should also connect a node here. And that's simply the object that we are going to intersect with. So I'm going to bring it in. And obviously in this case, it's going to be the ground here. And, I'll, and then I'll simply expose the speed because it's going to be an important control. Link it up to a float and call it distance. And that's actually going to be the max distance at which I'm going to detect intersection. Now on the other side here, where my outputs are, we're going to have all the information supplied by the intersect node. And you see I have hit, which defines if I have intersection. And I get all the information at the intersection point, which is the position, the normal and the geometry norm normal. And the difference between these two is that the normal will respect smoothing groups. Then I have the distance to the intersection point. I have a boolean which says if I've hit the backside or not. I also have the object position, which is giving me the pivot of what I'm intersecting with. Then I have the set of UVW and face ID face coordinates, which are actually the same as the ones we discussed in the UDeflector node. So if you go back to the point collisions video, you can check this out. Of course, here inside the intersect node, I can choose a UV channel that's going to be used to supply my intersection UV source here. So now let's create some particles at the intersection points. I will definitely need a generator. And one more group. I'm going to call this group dust wave. So this generator is going to be feeding particles into the group. I'm just going to be using particles per second here. Now obviously you should generate uh, particles when intersection is happening. So I'm going to connect the heat. And they should obviously be positioned where the intersection happens. So I'm going to connect up the position. And now let's check what's happening. Okay, I'll need to put something in the distance here. So I'm going to just put 100. And when I kill the speed, you'll see the magic happening. I have the particles on the bottom of my teapot projected on the terrain. And they are dying off because I have some lifespan. But what you see over here is that when I get to the bottom of the valley, I don't project. That's because here the distance is more than 100. And if I want to make that effect more pronounced, I can just say, for example, 60 here. So you see I'm stopping the intersection over there when the distance becomes more than 50. And then to the bottom of the valley, I don't project. And then I continue projecting here when the distance becomes less than 60 again. So now let's build up on this system. It's quite boring that all my particles get projected down there and in the same pattern. And I can easily diversify that by randomizing the direction actually. So right now it's pointing straight down, Z minus one. What I can do about that is that I can create some randoms. like from minus one to one. And when you want to randomize direction, you should always remember that you need to create randoms in the minus one to one range because you'll need it to go both left and right from your range and not just from zero to one, which means only in the positive direction. So I'll have my random, I'll expose my X and to Y. And, and I'll put my random here and I'll, and I'll put my random in the X. Copy it for the Y. And it's very important to be creating different, to create different seeds for this. And now you see already that I have my positions quite randomized. Now it will be very cool if I have 
some kind of a range so I can have a control to specify how much they are spread it. And I'm gonna use the system that we have already built before. So I'm gonna expose my value 1 and value 2 for both my randoms. I'm gonna create a float for my range. And as you remember, I'm naming my important controls. So it should be spread. And, and I'm gonna create another float that's gonna invert my spread by multiplying it by minus one. So I'm gonna use that negative value for the bottom of my range and the positive value for the top of my range. So I'll have it like that and feed the same thing to my second random. So now you see that when I increase my spread, I'm gonna have my particles more spreaded, and when I decrease it, I'm gonna have them less spreaded. And you see that I disappear at some point because the ray runs too much sideways, and in the distance of 60, it's not getting to anything. But if I increase my distance, you see it's gonna cover. Quite nice. Okay, so I have that spread things solved up. And I definitely don't need the seed particles visible anymore, so I'm gonna turn them off. Go to seeds and show and say none. Okay. So the next important thing I want to do is to be able to create more particles while the distance is lower and less particles while the distance is higher. Which is actually what would really happen. Like if the guy with the like if the guy with the big fan on its bottom gets really close to the ground, it should be kicking up much more, right? So, so I'll definitely need to do something with the distance over here. And I can use that distance in connection with that rate over here because I'm because I'm creating particles per second, so I can derive the rate. And now the shear distance and now the distance itself is not gonna work. But what's gonna work is a normalized distance. And I'm gonna simply have an add multiply. And you see now how useful this control is. I can simply divide my distance by my max distance, which should probably be renamed. So it's telling me better what it's doing. So now I'm gonna have the distance in the range from 0 to 1. And with that, I can multiply by the rate I need to have for my maximum would be 24 in this case and run the simulation but the problem is that you see here my particles stop all of a sudden to check out how this is working it will be quite handy if my spread is not that high so I'm simply gonna put it to point 0.1 also, that gets quite crowded here. So for now, let's just put this float to multiply by 1, for example. And since my seeds are quite a lot, it's still getting crowded, so I'm gonna make these guys only 10. Okay, so now let's see what happens. By pulling down my teapot, and you see now nothing much is happening, which is definitely a sign that I have done something wrong. And I think, yeah, I didn't set this to divide over here, which is actually something really important. So now if I look at what's going on, maybe this should be increased. So now you see that actually, when I'm raising it up, I'm having more particles, and when I'm, and when I'm pulling it down, I have less particles. That's simply due to the fact that when I divide this distance to the max distance over here, what I'll get at the end is a value in the 0 to 1 range, but actually it will be 1 when the distance is at the maximum. So I'll need to invert that. And that's another thing we have already done before. I simply need to subtract the value from 1. So set this guy to minus. 
1 minus my value is going to be the inverse. So now as you see here, when I lift this up, then I'm going to have less particles. When I put it down, I'm going to have more particles. I think I can now increase my spread again. And possibly my multiplier. So let's see what's happening. You see that's more like it. When I have when I have less when I have least distance, I have more particles. And I'm gonna bring up my seeds again. Okay. Which is kind of hardly visible when that's too so high, so let's bring it down. And you see the concentration over here. Here on the peak. So okay then, I think that's what we needed. So I'm going to rename my dynamic set, should be project, because I'm actually projecting my seed particles on the ground. And then I'll just need to do the dynamics. And oddly enough, the dynamics of the dust wave would be actually very similar to what we did in the black box tutorial, which was the kick up, which was the kick up of the ground particles. And without thinking too much, I'm simply going to right click here, go into black boxes, scene files and I'm gonna load up kick up with controls and that's gonna give me my black box which is simply gonna need a particle group I'll give it the dust wave group and it's gonna need that node and I'll give it my teapot node so now if I preview again not much is happening because I think the scale was quite different back then and here in the distance, I'll need to put my max distance, of course. Oh, now they're fine. But obviously the speed is way too much, so maybe 0.5. And now it's actually happening. And you now see how simply by getting my black box, out of, out of storage, I made a very quick, cool thing, you know, which could have taken me quite a lot of time to set up if I just decided to make it from scratch. Then I can simply go into my kick up again and do something for the secondary controls, like the inherited speed, for example, or the height, or whatever. So now you see, because I increased my height, I have them lifted higher, for example, and the inherited speed would be able to push them forward, let's say 60%, for example, Let's see what happens. And yeah, that height is quite a lot, but that's stuff that you can simply tweak to your heart's content. So I think that's pretty much our dust wave. And another cool toy in Thinking Particles Arsenal, the intersect node to play with.